Hi, in this segment I'll be discussing plane wave reflection and transmission. I'll also include three different videos uh, I made with my MATLAB script showing you the total fields in both region 1 and 2. I'll also upload that MATLAB script onto the class website so that you can play around with the different uh, values such as the permittivities and observe how the plane waves uh, vary. <clears throat> so what I've illustrated here is the total electric field in region 1 that is a function of the incident electric field and the reflected electric field. And the total is given by equation 1 where uh, I've also illustrated the total magnetic field which is given by equation 2 which is also a function of the incident and reflected uh, magnetic fields where the reflected electric field and magnetic field are a function of your complex reflection coefficient in general the complex reflection coefficient which is a function of the wave impedance in region number two and the wave impedance in region number three or excuse me region number one so in region number two you have the transmitted electric field given by four and the transmitted magnetic field given by equation number five where the transmitted fields are a function of the transmission coefficient which is in general complex as well and that's given by equation number six so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples that I have illustrated here so let's take a look here at the lossless lossless case where I have both uh, where I have air in region number one let me slow this down first expand that. I have air in region number one where I have a real permittivity, real epsilon prime of one, a, re, uh, a double epsilon prime of zero, and in region number two I also have a lossless re, uh, media and the uh, relative permittivity is two. I've illustrated both the electric field and the magnetic field as a function of space, in this case the z direction because my wave is propagating in the z direction and also as a function of time where t is uh, the period. Uh, the solid red line in region number one is representative of the electric field and the uh, dashed red line is representative of the uh, magnetic field. Uh, two points to be made here in region number one, the amplitude of the electric field uh, does reach uh, a point that's greater than one, as you can see here. And in my MATLAB script, I had uh, designated my incident electric field to have a peak value of one volt per meter. But here, you can actually, for your total field, have a value greater than one volt per meter because you have a non zero reflected electric field due to the non-zero reflection coefficient which is due to uh, the mismatch between the wave impedance in region number two and the wave impedance in region number one. The other point I wanted to make is that the electric field and the magnetic field in region number one uh, have zero phase difference in both space and time. So. I am specifically looking at the peaks of the electric field and the magnetic field as a function of time and space and I see that they reach a maximum at the same time and a minimum at the same time. And we'll see that this isn't necessarily the case when you're dealing with lossy media. Um, so in region number two uh, you have again the electric field and the magnetic field uh, <coughs> in phase and also we notice that because it is a lossless media uh, in region number two that the amplitude as a function of distance does not decay uh, and in the following examples we'll see that is not the case so let me pull up the next example that being a lossy dielectric. So let me slow this down again. We'll 
expand that. So region number one again is air. Uh, this time around you can see that the amplitude is a little bit uh, higher than one as well. Um, and that's expected since we have a non-zero reflection coefficient at the interface. Uh, but because of the lossy, uh, fact, the, the lossy nature of medium number two, where I've designated the loss with a non-zero double epsilon prime, we now have an electric field uh, in region number one that is out of phase with the magnetic field as a function of time and space. So again, you have to look at the peaks of the electric field and the magnetic field to see this characteristic. And you see the same, same nature in region number two. And again, that's because we have a complex wave impedance, uh, which leads to a complex uh, reflection coefficient at the boundary. Uh, the last point I also wanted to make is that um, in region number two, when you look at the field uh, envelope, you will see a decay, an exponential decay of its amplitude. And that decay is a function of the attenuation constant alpha, uh, which is the real part of the complex propagation constant gamma. So let's go back and take a look at our expressions and to get a better idea of what we're talking about here. So in region number two, where we have uh, a wave impedance eta two, uh, we we know that it's complex, and hence the reflection coefficient is also complex. So looking at equation number two, that introduces a phase term uh, here and a phase term here. So now that we have complex reflection coefficients and complex uh, wave impedance, we now have an E and H that are out of phase. And the same thing for the transmitted case as well, and I'm focusing on equation number five. So going back to the examples, I'm going to show you our last and third example, which is one where medium number two is a conductor. So in this case, we have air on the left side, a good conductor on the right, designated by double epsilon prime of 50. Uh, let me slow this down for a second, expand this. So you see that the amplitude is much larger than one now. Had region number two been a perfect electric conductor, you would see that the amplitude would reach uh, two. And um, you see also that the peaks of the electric field and the magnetic field are no longer in phase. Um, in fact, uh, hold on, let me see if I can slow this down for you. There we go. That's a little bit better. So by looking at the peaks of the electric and the magnetic field, we see that it, they are out of phase in both time and space. Um, and that's due to the fact that we now have a lossy medium number two that is a good conductor. And looking at the transmitted wave, you see that the uh, electric field and the magnetic field are still out of phase as a function of time and space, and in this case is decaying much faster relative to its wavelength. And that's because its attenuation constant alpha is much larger, and hence uh, you see that it's decaying much faster than the wavelength. Um, and in general, we refer to uh, the decay as a function of the skin depth, which is the inverse of your attenuation coefficient alpha. So if you have any questions, feel free to grab me after discussion or shoot me an email. This concludes this segment.